Well, the latest talk about the drought surrounds an El Nino brewing in the Pacific that some say would bring us a wet winter. 10 News anchor Robert Santos looked into whether our weekend storm is a prelude of what's to come and if we do get hard, is the county prepared? Record amounts of rain fell over the weekend in July, more than four inches in Ramona. San Diego ended up with 1.7 inches. And if what all the experts are seeing is right, then we could be in for more. All El Ninos are not equal. What we really care about are the big ones. And this is developing today into one that looks like or has the potential to be a big one. Geologist and natural disasters expert Dr. Pat Abbott keeps track of El Nino storms. He and other experts all notice the same thing. Sea surface temperatures are already warming up, and that could signal a moderate to strong El Nino coming in the winter. But here's what's tricky. Warmer ocean temperatures have existed around Baja California since 2013 because of that unusual phenomenon called the blob that scientists are still studying. Experts are looking into whether it's the blob that's enhancing thunderstorm and moisture levels lately on top of the usual monsoonal flow this time of year. Dr. Abbott also wonders this. It's possible this is a, an omen, a taste of what's going to become uh, more frequent in a warming world. Here's another interesting note. We looked back at big El Nino years in the early 80s when high tides combined with huge waves pounded the coast, collapsing piers and flooding restaurants like the Marine Room. Again in the mid to late 90s when storms flooded coastal neighborhoods and Mission Valley and clogged storm drains. The National Weather Service found summer months during those years were actually dry in the southwest. That means our weekend storm and other storms this past June and May aren't good predictors of what's to come. But if we do get hit hard again, are we prepared? Well, the city of San Diego says it's learned a lot from storms in the last decade alone, including beefing up its storm patrols before and during a storm. But there's always this. The very process of urbanization increases flood heights. Yeah, you've got everything paved and we've got a lot of rooftops. So here's a positive though. Our water supplies are low, so we definitely have a lot of flood, uh, flood storage capacity, so we can take the rain. So what about trouble spots like Mission Beach? Yeah, that happens all the time, right? It floods all the time. So the city has upgraded all the pumps in those areas. But the challenge is uh, Mission Beach is, is at sea level and it's at the end of the storm drain system. So ah. it's likely to get flooded in some capacity. So the same in Mission Valley, have they done anything? Yeah, uh, Mission Valley, Fashion Valley too. The city tells me that Fashion Valley actually was built to take all this flooded water from the San Diego River, uh, many of you live around there, and divert all that flooded water, uh, water away from nearby homes and businesses, and that's what happened in 2010. Uh, but again, we never know what Mother Nature is going to deal, uh, uh, you give us. Look what happened in Ramona, all that flooding that went on. Mm. One of the issues there, I was told, was that a lot of people have zero, uh, uh, zero escape landscaping, lots of rocks and gravel. All of that flooded and it blocked the storm oh drain. So oh we goodness. could do as much as we can, but some of these things just pop up. So it'll be interesting wow. if scientists make a connection between our wet July yes. and a possible big El Nino. Yeah. And that's it. That's what we're going to talk about here.